Hi, um, I'm out here in my backyard uh, where I've been doing uh, a lot of uh, biochar experiments, uh, trying to make good backyard biochar in a way that doesn't create a bunch of smoke. I live in an urban environment. You can hear the background noises of chickens and dogs and stuff. So having um, a, a smokeless, safe fire is important. Um, and I'm trying to get, uh, come up with a system that actually works well for people who don't have anything. Um, something that's basically free. A uh, method of making uh, biochar and using the excess heat for uses that they can have and, and use. So cook on it or heat a house. So I've come up with uh, the stuff that I've salvaged that I, I think could demonstrate something like that. Um, and it's a small pile of salvaged bricks some angle iron I uh, got out of a couple of uh, bed frames. Uh, a friend gave me uh, this uh, ceramic flue. Um, and then these cement block. The idea and the goal is to create something that is free to make, that is highly efficient in making biochar, and uh, that heat which escapes the process is usable. First I'm going to prepare the side here. Uh, level out the ground a little bit, and then I'm going to be uh, laying out uh, the foundation. It doesn't require any welding or anything. You can use what you've got. And So I want this uh, this channel, this is a, the fuel channel and air come in here. And I got a lot of small stuff, so I'm putting in twigs and stuff in bundles. Uh, it needs to be big enough to both handle some of the smaller stuff and some of the, you know, maybe two, three inches diameter stuff uh, coming in here. And then the ground slopes off here and then drops into the pit. I'm hoping to fill this pit with char to about here. Um, and we'll see. Um, and then on this side, it's the uh, it's gases, uh, burnt gases will go out here. Uh, this is shallower, um, but I, I wanted to keep it so that the heat is focused here and then the exhaust up here. So, so the chimney will go in in this area. So as you can see now, I've kind of laid out uh, the structure. You can see it's pretty sloppy. Um, that's the kind of guy I am. And um, I don't think it makes a difference. Um, I'm going to seal everything with a layer of dirt over the top of this um, by digging a hole over here. My next one, uh, the char that uh, I hope to make will stay in the hole. Uh, we'll just cover it, um, probably add compost tea, some urine, and uh, stuff, and just uh, leave it, and come back and check it. Weeks, months, and years in the future, see how uh, the garden grows over it, that kind of thing.
So you have that, you can see as it uh, mounted it up. And so it looks like a, an oven, a, sort of a uh, French baking oven, instead of bread we're baking biochar. And it can be sealed. I, I figured uh, I could uh, take mud and plaster the outside, make it maybe seal a little bit better, but uh, we'll see how this works first. It's all an experiment. I have no idea how it's going to turn out. Now, maybe you noticed, or maybe you didn't, that I didn't cover this stone. And that's because my idea is that we'll start with two fires. One will be here, uh, near this way, on the edge of the, the fuel chute, and then it drops off right here. So we'll start a fire there, and we'll start a blue fire here to start developing draw. Once we get the draw going, and the fire, the heat, the flames being sucked underneath, um, we'll get those embers pushed into the pit, and the main chamber of the fire then will be the pit eventually as things warm up. Now this is damp soil, it's rainy season, it hasn't rained for a while, so it's not saturated, but uh, really damp. So there's going to be a lot of uh, moisture that's going to be probably coming off of this um, and down in the pit uh, before it really starts heating up. 